Thank you so much, TJ. We will call this special call meeting uh, to order. Uh, today is August 18, uh, 2020, and I'm so delighted that our citizens are here and then also our Board of Commissioners today to listen to our public hearing uh, and then also to hear from our citizens. Board of Commissioners, I wanted to reiterate the fact that this meeting is being held again virtually be, uh, with the Opens Georgia Open Records Meeting Act, uh, simply be, because of our um, situation with COVID-19 and I appreciate your time and talent for joining us virtually today. Uh, I would like to start by calling roll to make sure all my commissioners are here today. All our commissioners are here. I'll start with District 1, uh, Henry Mitchell III. I just, if you could just acknowledge your presence. Okay, he's just joined in the lobby. Okay, let me go on to District 2, Vice Chairman uh, Kelly Robinson, if you could acknowledge your presence. Kelly Robinson, District 2, present. Okay, thank you. District 3, Commissioner Terenia Carthen. District 3, present. Okay. District 4, Ann jones Snyder. District 4, present. Okay, District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, I think I saw you, come on. District 1, Commissioner Mitchell, present. Okay, thank you. Ramona Jackson-Jones, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, present. We have all five commissioners here today. So thank you so much, Board of Commissioners. Well, with no further ado, our purpose this morning is a public hearing to uh, millage rate and I, with this time, I will yield to Mark Teal, and uh, who is our county administrator, to lead the discussions this morning, along with our uh, assistant director of finance, uh, Sabrina Cogborn. And then after the, the presentation, I will open up the public hearing so we can hear from our citizens. Mark Teal, with no further ado, you have the floor. You are Sabrina. Is Mark, Mark, are you on here? I don't know if I see him. I can go ahead and start with mine, though. Yes, I'm Barbara Daniel, and uh, I'm a longtime resident of Douglas County, and I'm a senior citizen. And I would like to speak to the commissioners and uh, the mayor and uh, appraisal department and all those that are decision makers. Yes, yes, yes. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Okay. Can everyone see so, my Sabrina is Sabrina is Mark coming on? He was supposed to be joining us. Who's going first? Yes, you and Mark. I'm Who's here. I'm here. There were two meetings, oh. Madam Chair. I was in the other one by myself waiting on everybody else. Oh. <laughs> so here I'm here now. Go first, okay, Mark? Mark, Mark is here, Sabrina. Okay. Mark, I've, I've yielded the floor to you. I've done everything I need to do, and then you determine which way you want it to go. You want me to show mine first, Mark? Yeah, you can go ahead and show that. Okay. Uh, so this is the presentation that uh, Commissioner Robinson had requested us pull, just to kind of give you guys some history. Can everybody see my screen right now? No. No? I, I can see it. I can okay. as well. You can't? Hmm. Okay. Um, it's the document that I had emailed out this morning to Madam Chair. That's the summary chart. Okay. Uh, so okay, it's just showing the history of the mill that's from 2008 to 2020. So you all can see on this column B, it has the value of a mill and how it's changed over time. In column C, we have what the actual millage rate was. And then on column D, it's just the increase or decrease from the prior year. And then column E, this is the value of the rollback of no tax increase. So what this is, is any year that the board chose to <clears throat> not raise the taxes due to reassessment fees, which is basically just inflation where, you know, the citizens are gaining from having being able to sell their house more and you know, goods cost more. It's just the board saying, you know, we had enough fund balance. We didn't need to go with inflation. 
So if you just look at kind of even just these past years, that was over $8 million of lost revenue by the board choosing to roll it back. It's always kind of a big thing we like to point out. And then in column F, it's just kind of the tax revenue. You can see it's went from you know, 33.6 to now the proposed 57.3. Um, the increase or decrease in the prior year of the revenue. And then this column is just showing the percentage of new growth. As you can tell, this year wasn't as good as we wanted. We were hoping for 3%. We only got 1.82% of new growth. And new growth is just tax dollars that it does not require a tax increase. It's any kind of new building, any kind of additions added on, anything of that nature. And then column I is just showing what the ending fund balance was for all those years for the general fund, the ending unassigned. You can tell how it's varied over years. And obviously we don't have it yet for 2020 because that'll be dependent upon what the board chooses on the 26th and where we end the year. And then J is just the percentage of general fund expense. As you know, we have a policy we like to stick to of 10% of general fund expenses. And you can see we've pretty much always met that, except 2010, we were a little short. And then this was a <clears throat> item that Commissioner Robinson requested, just kind of some notable items that were affecting cash flow. Um, as you know, Jennifer's out on medical leave, so I couldn't find anything in her folders for this, but I just went back through every CAFR back through 2008 last year and picked out what I thought were some of the larger ones. As you can see, in 2008, we had a $9 million purchase for land for the new jail. While the new jail was... Um, built through the 2010 SPLOSS dollars, this was for the land. In 2009, as you all know, we had the floods and we had 3.1 million of unplanned road projects. We did get 1.7 million in FEMA reimbursed though. So there's still a variance there. In 2010, we had $1.3 million we had to spend to the West Georgia Regional Library for the construction of a new library. So they are the ones who are responsible for it, but we just had to make payments to help facilitate the transaction. 2011, we didn't have anything of not notability there, but I did want to make a note that we did take a credit for our retired contribution. And I know I spoke yesterday thinking we had never uh, amended the budget down, but before I was working here, it looks like we have. We amended it down with 3.5 million mid-year in 2011. Uh, 2012, there wasn't anything of any you know, large purchases. In 2013, $2.8 million in increased public safety expenses of $727,000 for new sheriff vehicles and then just additional costs with operating the new jail. Because it, you know, the SPLOS paid for the actual jail, but obviously operating expenses that went along with it. And then we also had to move the fire and EMS quarters to an existing building, but that building did require renovations. In 2014, I just thought it was important to note that service delivery negotiations began, and that is kind of when our lost revenues started um, changing and when we got the three buckets where our general fund got broken up and we had to break out fire and EMS, the uninked fund, and the animal control fund. And it makes kind of the comparability a little off on when you look at fund balances because you have a lot of transfers in and out, and it can get kind of confusing, but that was when service delivery began. Uh, in 2015, it was $1 million purchased for the Bleakley building. In 2016, it was $4 million towards the new animal shelter. 2017, we had $1.7 million to complete the new animal shelter, and then it was $2.2 million to renovate the Bleakley building. And then in 2018, this is when we did the security system upgrades for the courthouse, it was $500,000. We uh, had $4.3 million in vehicles, and that was uh, for sheriff vehicles and Connect Douglas vans, but the Connect Douglas vans were 80% grant funded. And then we also had the $3 million in the Bleakley building renovations. As you know, we bought that building, but there had to have a lot of changes to get it in operating. And that's just for the citizens who aren't aware. That's where the tax and tag office is and where the new fleet is. Um, and then in 2019, we had 1.5 million in the courthouse renovations and security upgrades. And that's just where the courthouse began to become secure, where you had to go through security from the front of the door instead of just on the court side. And then we also had 2.6 million for fixed bus, bus route systems. But again, a large portion of that was all grant funded. So that's kind of just showing some larger effects on the cash flow and then how it's affected our fund balance and showing how the tax revenue, kind of trying to paint a whole picture of where we've got to where we are today. 
And with that, Mark, I'll yeah. hand it over to you. Yeah, and you may have mentioned it, Sabrina, but the, the $9 million purchase for the jail, for the land in 2008, that was reimbursed through Splost. Oh, it was? Okay. I yeah. wasn't aware. It, I was just looking at the 2008 CAFR. That was before I was there, so I apologize. So that one would have been Splost. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was reimbursed through Splost. Um, oh, okay. 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 I'll quit sharing my screen. There's no questions. I'm sorry, you you asked if there were any questions? Mm -mm. Ma'am, that would just be from the board, um, not the citizens okay. yet. Thanks. Okay, you ready, Madam Chair? Yes, Mark, I'm so sorry, my, my mic was off, yes. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so yes. the chairman's been pushing us really hard to get these numbers down. Let me move my screen. Um, I'm not sure how to get rid of that top part, but you can still see what's on there. Um, so right after the recession, um, so the millage rate increase, like 2009, 10, 13, and 14, uh, respectively, was 0 0.106 mils, 1.968, uh, 2.35 mils in 13, and no increase in 14. And then for 2017, 18, and 19, there was no increase. And then as far as the numbers, and we'll show you the calculations later. Um, so we've got the numbers down, hopefully to 1.425 mils proposed for 2020. So the millage rate comparison for those same years, so 13, 14, 15, and 16 was 12.25, 12.153, 11.809, uh, 11.267. And I know a lot of you can see this screen, but I'm sure there's some people out there that are on phones that cannot. So 2017 through 20, uh, the millage rate uh, comparison was 10.768 in 17. 18 was 10.213. The same in 2019, 10.213. And currently a proposed millage rate of 11.638 based on the calculations again, that are coming forward. Uh, the cumulative revenue, if the millage rate was not rolled back, um, so 14 through 16, that was 3.5 million, and 17 through 19, that would have been 5.6. So that's almost $9 million uh, because we rolled back the millage rate. Mark, so, on your slides. Yes, ma'am. Your slides. The only one we can, I can see is the one that's the comparative millage rate. I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but you had up three other slides that show where what the millage rate was from 2014. Can you pull that slide up? Or maybe I'm the only one yeah, that can't see it. They're on my screen. Are they not on your screen? Okay. I can see. No, it. that's okay. If this. I can see them. Okay, make sure everybody else can see. Okay, yeah, everybody, if y'all can see them. Okay, that's good. All right, there you go. No problem. Okay, so homestead property mill increase. So the annual impact of a 1.425 millage rate, which was, you'll see later on the calculations. So for a $200,000 house, that would be $105 uh, annual impact and the monthly impact would be $9. That's a, and the average household in Douglas County is a $200,000 house, but you can see the entire list. Okay, any questions from the board on these slides? Uh, Mark? Do you yes, ma'am. Do you have a figure uh, for non-homesteaded property, such as businesses? Uh, no, ma'am, we do not. Um, I, I 
can give that to you real quick, Mark. Um, what what you would you like to see? The you may just pull it up off for the same thing that he has. Yeah, pull that up, somebody, and I'll back out of this. Okay. Let's see. Okay, can everyone see that? All we would do is we just take out the homestead exemption, and that will give you the figures over here for what Mark just had. So for 200000 would be $114 annually. And this is just on the county portion of the bill. It does not include school or cities. That, that's correct. Yes. And we have that noted down there. The Board of Education, they, I mean, we do formally adopt theirs, but they choose it first. And I think they're going to adopt theirs on the 24th. And then the city is totally different. And again, that's only if you're in the incorporated area. And again, not everybody even pays Board of Education. It would depend on if they met the age and filed for the exemption and that's their you know main property so everybody's tax bill is a little different but this is only the county's portion you're correct you want me to take it off now for mark or yeah commissioner, commissioner robinson has his hand up yes madam chair yes, may I? commissioner yes and yeah you have the floor Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, so I appreciate, I guess we're just jumping in here right now, so I, I'm gonna flow with this. Uh, thank you, staff, for um, trying to pull that information together. I did ask for this information to be shared with both the Board of Commissioners and the public during our finance committee yesterday. I think it's always important to give context. While I appreciate the propaganda and the nuances that are out there about what's happening, it's always important to, to look at the facts. You know, don't, don't, it's always important to see the facts, look at the numbers. And what I want, what, what I was hopeful that came through with this is to show how we got here, All right? So you, you've got a pretty good window from 2008 to nine, a pretty, about a decade, right? And there were some things that happened along the way, the great blood, the great recession, et cetera. But, but um, um, Sabrina, in, in the height when I like, didn't hear, is when we raised the millage rate. Uh, I didn't hear the 11% translation in 11. You guys need to turn your phones off, uh, except for Jennifer. Yes, Mr. Robinson, if I may. So everyone with that's on a phone call, please mute your phones. If if I mute you through this, you won't be able to come back. So if everyone would please mute your phones, we're getting a lot of feedback. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner. No, you. Thank you. Thank you, County Administrator. Thank you. All right. So. Uh, so Sabrina, uh, and what I wanted to highlight is uh, the county has raised um, the millage rate two times per hour significantly. Back in 11, I think we raised it, what, about 11%? And in 13, we raised it 23.8%. So during that period of recession, we raised it, what, 35% collectively. All right, that, that, that fell on deaf ears, but that needed to be highlighted. What was underlying that? is also that we were number one in the state in foreclosed sales, distressed sales. We were number two in the region in unemployment and fourth in the nation in personal bankruptcy. It's important that Douglas County be honest about what the situation was. Where were we? And why did we make such a decision at that time? All right. Our priority, again, prior to that was to build a jail. And while yes, it's reimbursable, you took 10 million cash out to general fund to float a capital expense. This is important. And so if you look at, and, and this spring you did an excellent job. I was impressed that you went across all those cappers. That, that was a lot of good work. And people don't understand it. No, well done, um, Sabrina, for jumping in there like that. But what she chronicled is that if you notice that it was a lot of capital expenditures that we're pulling out of our operating budget, which is insane. Think about, like, no, that's something that you would use for a SPLOS. I mean, we're buying cash for our animal shelter building. We're spending cash for our tax building. We're spending cash for the build out of the courthouse. All right, we, not to mention the four and a half million dollars we blew our operating budget for for them roads. That wasn't said, but it's okay. I, I, you know I wasn't going to let that go. All right, so there's a lot of cash that was spent for, for capital expenditures. Right, and, and I get the psyche. 
Think about this. In 2009, in an off year, we put on a referendum to build a jail. Oh, boy. A single source item. Pay attention. The city's got nothing, and all we got was a half million square foot building. Taj Mahal. Nothing for five years in capital costs. Nothing. Point four. That's important. All right, so here we are, uh, moving along, during the Great Recession with negative growth. Right? We had no choice, but our priority was, hey, let's take $10 million for land, for jail, as an economic development incentive. Now, you can't get away from this history. Right? This is important. Like, what did we do back then? What were the decisions that we made back then? And what was the context that we made it? Right, to get us to where we are, right? Because we're going to get in this ring about where we are. We need to know where we came from. That's important. So I'm almost finished, but this is this is about the public hearing. This is when it matters, and this is why y'all hire us to do what we do. So here we are. We're moving along. We spent all this money on these capital expenditures that normally should be taken care of by us flaws. But what happened was, here we go. We're, we're moving along. But, but the psyche was, okay, we're going to raise the military rate. We had, what, mid-20s. I think it was about $24 million cash, right? But we kept spending. Oh, boy. You, you kept spending. You had enough in your operating budget, $24 million, and we just kept spending. We're, we're using it for capital expenditure, not for raises. The commentary was, they should be happy that they got a job. Oh, boy. Oh, I got a great memory. All right, so you treat your, your workers like batteries, but you buy these Taj Mahal buildings. Think about it. All that was done during that decade was internally focused. Nothing was for the citizens. Nothing. Nothing. Right? It was all this internal. Now, I get it. It had aged out. I get it. As, as it we were coming to the end of an era. Right? Well, let's get this jail in. Let's get this animal shelter in. Let's get this courthouse in. Let's get this tax commissioner. All... Uh, no problem. This is not about evil versus good. It was a matter of priority. Right? So here we are. You're burning down cash, though. You're burning down through major purchases that normally should be taken care of with a splost. That's what's important. Look at the priority. Look at how the cash went out of here. So now you're burning down. Then, not only are you burning down cash, then you're rolling back your inflation for five straight years years. You rolled it back. You can't spend and save at the same time. That person who believes they could be a both a Republican and a Democrat at the same time, it doesn't work. You can't do both. Pick one. Pick one. So here we are. We're spending along. But you were saying we're talking about we're saving. So you're giving it back in the same motion. You're spending on one hand. You're talking about you're saving. But look, look what you're doing. You're undermining yourselves. This is, this is a math reality check, right? You undermine it, our own decision-making. All right, there's no way around this. Get this ring now. The math don't lie. So if, in fact, you're constantly spending up, but you're rolling back the revenue to cover that because you're supposed to have a balanced budget, eventually that account, that auditor told us that's not sustainable, right? That, 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 that financial advisor told you, like, back off. Right? The, the standard and poor says, my concern, those six words and those six pages, like declining revenue is a concern. Those were policy choices. Right? This was like you you hear, but are you listening? You can hear, but are you listening? Right? I'm almost finished because this is important for the for the public. This is for the public. So here we are. We didn't burn down. Now, don't get us wrong. We, 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 when we went to Wall Street, when, when the new administration took over, and we're sitting there for the new SPLOST, right? And this is what we should do for the SPLOST. It should be more expansive. It should be for things like parks and roads and stuff that historically been neglected. I mean, I've been here 30 years, and all of you guys moved in these new communities doing this era and stuff, and the roads are just not being paved because the priority was all about the comforts of staff. It was never about the citizen. That's an ideological focus. It's okay, but it is what it is. So if we're going to judge the math, like, no, let's look at what it was. The priority, 
So here we are. We're coming down to the end. So we're up in Wall Street. We're sitting there, and they says, you know, we appreciate you guys. You got good credit because, again, I protected the credit. Like, okay, Mr. Chairman, if, if, if you're going to spend, you know, if you're going to build that animal show, don't mess up our credit. So they said, oh, we got a great credit. We got a great rate. But they says, but guys, put a policy in place. Don't just go around spending your big, you know, capital, your, your, your operating budget on huge capitals without a policy. And so we put that long-term capital policy in place, and we did some things to correct some things. But, but he, here's where we are. So we're, we're at a place where we're, 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 we are spending faster than our revenues can sustain. We have a policy that's rolling it back by default. And of course, you're going to have this hole. There's nowhere around it, right? And I just watched this thing like, okay, All right? This is what's called local deficit spending. No, no. They do it in Washington, but they can print money. They'll catch up with inflation tomorrow. But us, you catch up with it today. Like, okay, I know you got to pay for this thing next year. Okay. All right, you can you can bet that you can throw that ball that far. Okay. And now we're having to make an adjustment here. And, and thank you, Sabrina, for being honest about the fact that we did do an adjustment down back then because we had to. We were going through, obviously, the Great Recession. Now, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. The pandemic is real. When we pushed over this county back in March and April, when we, we set it over, and it's like, oh, my goodness. Oh, it was an impact. So it wasn't just about the budget. It got exasperated. The pandemic threw everybody under the bus. Like, game over. Everybody started over. So don't get me wrong. That pandemic was real, right? I mean, you guys know about it. People were unemployed. We're sheltering in place. It was something that we had never experienced before, and it had a very real impact here locally. Unlike Congress, who gets to bail out themselves and everything else by printing money, we didn't. We had true lost revenue. So not only did we have a pre-existing hole, now a new hole was created and then compounded by the fact by an overinflated budget. A perfect storm for where we are. A historical hole versus where we are today with the pandemic plus the budget of 2020. That's what we're here to fix. And I believe that the administration has come forth with a plan. We'll be fine. Life will go on. But it's important that you understand the truth. It's always about, like, you know how we're doing this. Truth. Be honest. This is where we are. Now we're going to make some adjustments. I mean, life happens. Nobody expected this 100-year pandemic. It's just like, oh. But it uncovered some underlying structural issues that we had. It was underlying. So with that being said, I think that brings us forward to where we are that you, you burn down and there fiscally needs to be a, a shift. You can no longer roll back. You can no longer do the things you do and you have, you have no choice. Unless there's some adjustments made within the budget, you may be faced with a millage rate. I told you that two months ago, like, okay, you, there's no way you're gonna get around this unless there's gonna be some drastic changes within the administration, but we'll see. Today, tonight, and next week, we'll show what the administration um, um, has prepared in order to guide us forward. I mean, this is a leadership moment. And, you know, I look forward to, to supporting the administration. I'm open to hearing what they have to say and what they're thinking. I've only gotten partial parts of it. So to my peers, I don't know any more than you guys know at this moment, per se, going into this meeting of in the finance. I wanted to make sure you guys had the facts. So with that being said, um, I, I hope that helped um, Mark and, and Sabrina to give a little bit more context to your story. I appreciate the, the, the you had all the facts there, but it needed to be told in a certain way that the, the citizens could understand outside of the math. So, Madam Chair, we're going to yield the floor, and I guess you go from there. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Mark. It's with, if you could just finish wrapping up and frame everything for us, if you could, and then uh, we we'll follow up with the commissioners. So, Mark, would you finish up, please? Yes, ma'am. And let them know well, how we if, uh, arrived from if, if all citizens would, please also turn off your video until it's your turn to speak. Um, not the commissioners, just uh, the public. Thank you. Commissioners, what we're doing for comparative pur purposes, so you'll know, uh, when we left the mid-year uh, budget uh, retreat, budget the number retreat. for the increase was 2.85 mils. And uh, we will show, uh, we'll show that starting point, and then we'll show what we've done to drop it down to the 1.42 mils. And Mark, I'm a, I'm a, you'll take it from here. You got it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you see my screen? Not yet. I can see it. Yeah, Mark, we can see it, yes. 
I can okay, see it. Okay, I guess I'll... It looks like you're on the analysis oh. worksheet, though, instead of dashboard. Yes, I'm going to start might... out with the analysis. Gotcha. Yes, so at the top, you see scenario C and scenario D. So those two columns. So the left column is where we left at the, the mid-year retreat. The right column is what is currently proposed. So I'll go through the changes. So the changes are highlighted in yellow. Um, so if you'll see row 31 where my cursor is. So we were at $1.332 million in CARES Act reimbursement. Um, <clears throat> we're now proposing the full 5.538 million. Um, we had discussions with ACCG uh, last week, plus documentation from ACCG that says that we can submit, they pretty much uh, directed us to submit payroll documentation for all frontline public safety employees, not including uh, E911 and jailers, but all your deputies, all your frontline people, fire and EMS. Um, so we're in the process of submitting that information for the CARES Act reimbursement. So as far as COVID expenses, so if you'll see to where my cursor is on code, let me move that to the middle of the screen. So 1.332 million was where we're at with, we're at at the retreat. And that's exactly what uh, line 31 says for the, uh, for the revenue. Um, so these expenses included uh, departmental expenses, PPEs, things of that nature. Um, portions of the $900,000 resolution by the Board of Commissioners, because um, that has since increased just a little bit since that point. So what we've done is decrease that number to 1,108,000. So currently we've spent 808,000 out of, and I'll show you what this number consists of. So 808,000 out of the resolution uh, that the Board of Commissioners adopted. So, if Chris Pumphrey's $200,000 is added, that is uh, plus the Board of Elections, 100000 for mailing out absentee ballots, um, which are CARES Act reimbursable. So that would bring you up to $1,108,000 currently. Um, ACCG expects that a Phase Two CARES Act will be coming soon. Uh, hopefully sooner than later. And at that time, we would begin submitting for departmental expenses, which I think currently, correct me if I'm wrong, Sabrina, it's around 350000 That's correct. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so another thing, so these numbers still include, um, so if you look at line 54 where my cursor is, there we go, we'll just highlight it a little bit. So an elimination of remaining fiscal year 2020 BIRs, 2.1 million. Um, both include $1 million um, to, to reduce the defined benefit contribution to the minimum requirement instead of the recommended. Um, hiring freeze on all frozen positions, 451,000. Elimination of the remaining fiscal year 2020 uh, training budget for all departments, 331000 Elimination of fiscal year 2020 holiday pay. Uh, and I don't want people to misunderstand, actually employees, that's not holiday pay per se, as some of you may think of it. That is uh, like for fire and EMS. That is the Christmas bonus. That's what that is. So expense credit for operating changes. So we met with, um, talked to all departments, um, a lot of the elected officials, the chairman talked to some of the elected officials, and we've got an additional $800,000 reduction there. So five days for employees uh, furloughs, that's $723,000. So all these numbers are the same as they were when we left the retreat. So now if you go to the dashboard, can everyone, can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, so column H. So this column is where we left the retreat. 
So we were at a $10 million fund balance unassigned. Um, everything else is the same as when we left the, the retreat. So the county required replacement of designated fund use, 2.4 million. Um, so you come up with, so a 2.35 millage rate increase proposed, and then you add 0 0.5 for, which is what the, uh, what came out of the mid-year retreat for economic development. So that's a half a mil for economic development. So your total millage rate would be using these numbers, 13.063. That's what was advertised in the, uh, in the Sentinel, which would be a total millage rate increase, including the rollback of 3.238. So if you go to the right column, so, and these numbers correspond to the numbers on the right column on the previous page. So we reduced the county policy required fund balance unassigned to 9.2 million. So it was discussed in the uh, mid-year retreat um, to have a maximum $92 million budget next year. And that is our goal. So when you look at these numbers, um, so the only the other difference is you had, so 0.25 mils for economic development instead of uh, 0 0.5, that's still $1.2 million for economic development. Um, you've got your 2019 millage rate. So the total 2020 millage rate in this column proposed would be 11.638, which is a 1.813 uh, total millage rate increase, and that includes the rollback. So any questions from the board? Mark, I think you 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 made a mistake when you said uh, it'll be a total 1.83. It's 1.42. If you know, well, it's 1.42. That number, you have to add the rollback. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay. Yeah, you add the rollback, it's up to 1.813. Yeah, and on the oh, previous okay. slide, we so the 1.4 number doesn't include the rollback so we were showing the effect it would have on properties. They are, they're already receiving that millage rate. So it, it, it's already included in their current taxes. So the increase okay. that they would so feel with their off property with... taxes. Ma'am? Okay. So when we left the uh, mid-year retreat, we read 3.23 in terms of uh, meals. And now we moved it. We, we were able to get it down to 1.8. That's including not the if we didn't roll back. I understand. Any yeah. questions from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. For this time, we will, if there are no questions from the Board, I'll open up this public yeah. hearing. Oh, Com Commissioner Robinson, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am. No, I, I think we're, um, I, I wanted to hear what the public had to say. So you're on point. I want to take you off task. In other words, I, I heard what you guys have presented. I need to process it, but I need to process it in the context of the hearing. So I'm going to yield for right now. Go ahead and continue with your uh, uh, your agenda, Madam Chair. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I'm looking, Mark, I want to make sure I'm correct. So the total total mil millage rate would be, I know initially what was proposed, would, it would have gone up to 13.06. And what we're bringing to the Board of Commissioners today is 11.638. Am I correct? Before I yes, ma'am. That's correct. Yeah, so the millage rate actually would be 11.638. Okay, we just want to make sure versus 13.63. At this time, I will open up. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Guider. I, I saw yes, I, I just want the public to know that we have not seen these figures until now. So this is something that we have to study over and digest. So uh, this is new to us too. So just want to know. Okay, and I know. We, I apologize, uh, Commissioner, to Commissioner Guider. We were still working on these numbers this morning, so I, I apologize if you have it. I think you got them at about nine o'clock, maybe or nine thirty. But yeah, and sorry, also, uh, Commissioner, if, 
and I'm I'm not sure, Commissioner Guider, but uh, you did you left or I left the workshop, the mid year retreat. Um, you had to drop off because of, the, of an emergency, but the board left some instructions. They said, you know, we're giving you some room, but they gave also some room for uh, this, the the administration to make uh, some wise, prudent decisions to see what we could do to bring that number down. We were able to bring the fever down as best as we could, and this demonstrates, and I certainly want to thank uh, Mark Teal and his team, and also David Corbin and everybody who worked with us to get this number at, in in position right now so we can present to the public. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this public hearing up and certainly this this point, um, clerk, the public hearing is now open. Certainly would like to hear from our citizens. Certainly, uh, I won't say who's for or against Lisa because uh, how many do we have, how many people we have, Lisa, and certainly you're going to drive the public hearing to just give them the instructions on how many minutes they have to speak. If you could do that for us, clerk. clerk yes, Jackson. ma'am. We we had um, I have ten that actually registered. However, there are, are probably several more that have um, just called into this meeting that that may want to speak as well. So I thought we would just go through the list of those that were registered first, and then we will call on um, others who may want to speak. Okay. Okay, the uh, first speaker I have is uh, Tara Morgan. Are you on the line? I don't hear her. You may need to unmute yourself. Okay, we'll go ahead and jump to the next person and we'll, we'll go back to the ones that I didn't get a response from. And just as a reminder, you have three minutes to speak. Um, when your three minutes is up, I will come in and interrupt and just ask you to finish up your, your sentence. Um, the next person is Jackie Scarlett. Yes, I'm here. Okay, you can go ahead and begin. Great, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to start off by thanking Douglas County for its commitment to improving our community and its dedication to our children's and our future. I'm actually honored to be able to support uh, your mission and your dreams financially. My partner and I regularly give to our community and charitable foundations we believe in, and we think of Douglas County as one more of those. However, we are blessed with jobs where we can work from home and don't need to worry about whether or not we can pay our bills or put food on our table. We're blessed that we won't notice the extra money being diverted from our savings account each month. And unfortunately, many in our community are not in that same position. Douglas County needs extra money right now for the same reasons my neighbors need extra money. COVID-19 has put undue stress on many people's lives in our community. Therefore, I propose the tax increase is not applied to homes of the following. Homes under $250,000, families of essential workers, our nurses, emergency personnel, and grocery store workers have been there day in and out for us while we have stayed safely hidden in our homes. We owe this to them. Um, I also propose those on unemployment are exempt and those whose household income is less than $150,000 for a three member household. Our community has been there for us this year and now I want to be there for them. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, the next person signed in is Sam Harden. Are you on the line, Mr. Harden? Mr. Harden? Okay, I'm going to go on to the next person, Joseph Douglas. Are you on the good line, morning. Mr. Douglas? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, you can, you can go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. My name is Joe Douglas. I live on Liberty Road, west part of the county. I'd like to speak against uh, any property tax increase for uh, several reasons. Primarily, uh, if you ain't got the money to go to the show, you don't go to the show. That's the way it is in my household. I understand and I appreciate, by the way, the information presented today is I have a better understanding of not only the history of spending in the county, but 
uh, the current pr and proposed spending, and I appreciate the uh, apparently the retreat that y'all had uh, to massage these numbers a little bit, if you will, and downward. But I would also uh, suggest that any rate increase is going to have a negative Im impact on property owners across the board in the following manner. And I think Mr. Uh, Benny Walter, our chief appraiser, will agree um, that tax increase, property tax increases, often uh, cause problems in the real estate sector all across the board, not just residential, but also industrial, as well as retail. And I can tell you, as a practicing appraiser, the negative impact on the property values uh, will also result in downward uh, values on the properties themselves. While Mr. Walter and his staff is trying to generate these revenues, you're going to have people like me coming in representing these property owners backing up uh, all of the appeals. Uh, I'd like to remind the commissioners that the... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, someone needs to please uh, mute their uh, phone. Uh, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, um, I'd like to remind the commissioners that uh, many of our mega distribution um, businesses and property owners over in the eastern part of the county, Thornton and Riverside and so on, are on triple net leases, which within their lease contracts say that these taxes are going to be passed throughs directly to the tenants. And what's going to happen is, and I've seen this with my own eyes, is they will revisit these leases as these property taxes are passed through to the tenant. And uh, if they can... Uh, have the same warehouse space in the adjoining counties, they will move. They, they don't play about these kinds of things because they're on such razor thin profit margins anyway. And also, they'll, uh, the tenant becomes the person having to pay these taxes and then the negative effect on the owner of that property or the investor, you might say, the value of that property goes down as the cost to stay in the county goes up. So if you have this double whammy of tenants moving and then you've got vacant properties, now you've got a property owner, or shall we say investor, that's not going to uh, want to A, stay here and is going to try and sell the property and while the property is vacant, obviously we're not going to be having any revenue. Mr. So, Douglas. Yes. Um, you've exceeded your time. If you could go ahead and try to wrap it up, please. Yes. Okay. And so I, I appreciate the time, but I also would like for you to reconsider uh, focusing more on massaging this budget as best you can. And I appreciate what you've done so far, but it's going to have a negative impact across all real estate. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Douglas. Um, the next citizen we have is Ulysses Evans. Are you on the line? Mr. Evans? Okay, we'll move on to uh, Charles Bessel. I think I pronounced that correctly. Are you on the line? Hi, yes, I'm here. Okay, you can go ahead now. Yes, I am. I'm neither at this point in time speaking to be opposed or for the proposed property tax increase. I'm simply trying to understand um, the need for it at this point in time. And um, one of the things that I had heard um, 
from others, or maybe it was reported in the centennial, is that the property tax increase would be, I don't know, 32.6% or roughly 33% increase. I guess I'm trying to understand whether that actually is the amount that your property tax bill would increase, or is that what the, the millage rate is increasing? I'm not sure I'm understanding what I'm hearing versus what the what's actually going to happen. So that's a question. I, I don't know whether someone can answer that or to reply to that or not. And then the second question I have is, um, I'm interested in knowing what percent of the total revenue generated by the city is actually coming from property taxes versus other sources. Okay. Okay, Mr. Bissell, what we're gonna do, I'll ask my clerk to, to write down your questions and we'll uh, hand that information off to our finance team and we'll crunch those numbers for you. We'll give you an idea of what that 32.9% meant at the time when it was proposed and tell you the effect that it has, the, the financial impact on the citizens if we had gone in that direction or planning. I'm certainly still before the Board of Commissioners. And I will make sure if you stay on the line, we will come back at the end once all the press, all the uh, public, he this public hearing is closed and we'll answer that question for you, sir. Are you willing to stay on the line with me? Oh yeah, that will be fine, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, at least I'm going to yield back to you. Mr. Bissell, could you just repeat that last, your second question? Yeah, my second question is, what percent of the total revenue that the city generates is actually coming from property taxes? Okay, thank you. Versus splash or some other source. Did you mean the city or the county? Well, the county, I'm sorry. Okay, I thought so. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, um, our next person. Thank you, Mr. Bessel. Um, our next citizen would be Mr. Todd Anderson. Mr. Anderson, are you on the line? I am. I am here. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Uh, Madam, Madam Chair and Commissioners, I, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to speak at this public hearing. Uh, my position is uh, that I'm against the raising of the millage. Um, I, I do appreciate all the work that has been done, but uh, you know the impacts of COVID and my ability to work, uh, you know, just struggling uh, to to make um, a lot of ends meet. I live over in the uh, off of uh, Liberty Tyree Road area, and. Um, you know, I look at a lot of the spending that we did and, and I appreciate the data around the spreadsheets of where, you know, we spent the money, but, you know, we don't talk about a lot of the other projects like Fox Hill, where we gave a 30 year tax abatement for that position that, uh, you know, we will create jobs and there'll be a lot of jobs, but I think, and I could be wrong, that uh, that will cause us to have more first responders, EMS, and we'll have to sit there and take on those projects. And uh, to me, 30 years abatement seems excessive, as well as uh, some of the struggling projects uh, like the convention st uh, center. I know we're advertising, spending money to try to get, you know, people to rent that facility out, but it was decisions like that, that um, partly contributed, I think, you know, and not solely, but, um, you know, and also on Boundary Waters where we have, you know, I think that uh, has been losing and I'd love to see the numbers on, you know, what it takes to maintain that facility and, and whether the Douglas County is getting the best bang uh, for the buck out there and, you know, maybe some restructuring, things like that. But um, my point is, it's, I just don't see, if, if the numbers are right, and I think uh, our, our last, uh, you know, guest, uh, citizen, Charlie, um, Charles, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name, had suggested, I just, I guess I just want to see what the effective 
you know, where we wind up. Because I think, you know, to your credit, I think initially what came out was a higher millage rate and you guys have kind of gone back to the woodshed and kind of, you know, on this retreat and kind of worked and, and kind of whittled down the numbers. But um, also as Joe Douglas had suggested, um, you know, I really think that if we kind of sharpen our pencils and we really look at this and, you know, why isn't splash another option? Um, you know, we're, we're coming up and why can't a splash option, you know, take us out of this, um, you know, because I think that would be a more of a fair uh, way of getting that revenue in. So anyway, I'll I'll uh, end there. And, and I just want to appreciate uh, you allowing me the time to speak. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, we'll move on to our next citizen, uh, which is Mr. Brian Moyer. Mr. Moyer, are you on the line? Not sure I pronounced it correctly. Uh, okay, we'll move on to the next one. Um, Carmen, um, I may mess this name up. Carmen Takuchi. Yes. Hello. Good morning. I'm I'm on the call. Okay. Great. You can go ahead and begin. Yes. Um, good morning, everybody. I wanted to find out if it would be a possibility that all the members, all the commissioners, will have ample time to review all the reports that were just presented today by 9.30 so that they can make a better decision that will impact all of Douglas County residents. My second question would be, based on the report presented today, what will be uh, the percentage increase for the real property taxes for us? Because I am confused. First they say something and now there's a different report. So I just wanna make sure what are we gonna be expecting? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know, Chairman, if you want to address that or. Um... We, we can, you could just, uh, we have the question written down and we'll come back and circle if, if you're able to stay on the line, Ms. Katusa. Uh, but certainly, Mark, yes. we can, sh okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back. We have the question and we will respond to it once, it's, um, once this public hearing ends, okay? Great, thank, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Lisa, okay. carry on. Okay. Um, the next citizen signed up is Miss Wanda White. Miss White, are you on the line? Miss White. Okay. We're going to circle back up to see if some of the others have joined since I called them. Uh, Tara, Tara Morgan. Um, Sam Harden. I'm, here. I'm sorry, I'm Tara Morgan. Okay, okay, Ms. Uh, Morgan. You can um, go just, ahead now. Okay, very briefly, I just, um, I'm here today um, to oppose the property tax as well, um, simply because of the times we're in with the COVID and all of the impact um, on a macro and micro um, level. Um, and that's that's my statement. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Morgan. Um, next, let's try Mr. Sam Harden. Hello, yes, I'm here. Okay, you can go ahead. Uh, just a quick uh, statement. Thank you all for what you're doing uh, and presenting this. I love the uh, proposal of, I think it was the second one that came on. Uh, she had a very um, extraordinarily great breakdown uh, and a great proposal, I think. Uh, I just wanted to just leave with a question because my other questions was answered during this brief, uh, was that, is it possible to consider a, or a, a sales tax uh, that would be just simply throughout the county, if you will. And then uh, there would be a, a time period, maybe it's a sales tax for two years to see what happened, was the revenue made up, uh, how did it get sure of what percentage would be made. Uh, so that's just a question that uh, maybe you already looked at, uh, maybe it was answered already, but uh, I'll yield my time back. Thank you very much. 
Okay, thank you. Um, the next person, um, Ulysses Evans. Did you make it on the line? Okay, let's go back to Brian Moyer. <clears throat> Is Mr. Moyer on the line? Okay, what about Wanda White again? Okay, that's all that I had um, that actually registered through email, but I think there are several other people maybe on the line that would like to speak. Um, this, and I just ask that the citizens bear with us because I can't see you. So, you know, we may have five people try to jump in at once. <clears throat> so if we could just try to bear with us as, as good as, as much as possible. Um, is there anyone else on the line that would like to speak that has not already spoken? I would like to. Yes. Hi. Okay. My name. I'm sorry. My name okay, what's your name? The what's first my one name is Geraldine Colbert. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You can go ahead. Yes, yeah, good. Good morning, uh, everyone. I, I so appreciate the hard work you guys did on these presentations. They are just wonderful. Um, I do oppose this uh, rate increase, and uh, especially if it's going to affect, uh, affect everyone across the board and mainly the senior citizens. But um, it's going to have a very negative impact on, on all of us. Uh, my thing over here is that I don't have, I haven't done any home improvement. One question I do have is there, I appreciate the gentleman who suggested the uh, sales tax increase for a couple of years. That was a great uh, suggestion. Are there other ways that we're able to utilize here in Douglas County that could offset these taxes other than, you know, the sales tax increase? Hello? Hello? Ma'am, Lisa, did you answer? I think we got disconnected. <laughs> I thought we got disconnected. I'm sorry. Can yeah, you I was that asking. Question? A, yeah, my question is other than the sales tax increase that the uh, gentleman before me um, suggested, are there other ways that can be utilized to offset these taxes, this increase? <laughs> We'll write that question down and, and come back to that at the end of the meeting, like the others, if that's okay with you. Yes, I'll, I'll stay on the line. Another question that I have is that I would like to get a tax card or a tax report to show the, uh, that has the data on it that we, um, you know, that we could look at and review. Does that come out uh, once a year? Do y'all send it out to the public? Or how will I be able to get my hands on something like that? Uh, Chairman, I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, we'll look into that and see if we can get an answer for you by the end of the meeting. Okay. And um, lastly, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, we want to make that information available to you. We'll we'll find out. We have the we have uh, heard your statement and we'll find a way to do that and, and we'll respond to you at the end. And I believe you have one more question and I'm gonna... Yeah, uh the the uh gentleman, I believe is one of the commissioners who pretty much broke this up. This is my first time coming on, you know, getting into involved in this and so I'm trying to get a better understanding of what's going around going on and I wanted to know who is the gentleman that spoke very very clearly and broke everything down for us to give us a better understanding of uh, you know the taxes and how the budget is being run and so forth like that because I feel like he did a wonderful job and I wanted to ask him if he could get me a copy of the uh, deficit spending report. A copy of the deficit spending report? 
Yeah, yeah, the the money that's coming out of the budget to pay for uh, the buildings and so forth like that. Yes, ma'am, we, we will uh, try to do that. What I'm doing, I have all these questions, Lisa, and we want to make sure we have everybody's name because okay. this is a public hearing. Certainly don't want to be here all, all day, but we will be responding to everyone separately. And, and the commissioner was our vice chairman, uh, Kelly Robinson, but a lot of the information that he was alluding to was uh, the previous administration. It was before my administration, so I wanted to make that clear. I know he was speaking, and I almost okay. interrupted and said before Ramona. But he was trying to give a, a mm. correlation of where we are today and where we were back then. So that's what he was doing. Okay. But we will make sure you get that information. Comparison, great. contrast. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Great. Lisa, okay. we're going to move on. Sounds great. Thank you all so much for your time. Okay, okay. we will. And we're going to try to respond to each uh, citizen. Lisa, I may have to just get, get all their telephone numbers and sit down. This is, again, a public hearing, and we will be here all day. So I want to be respectful to number one, the citizens, and then also number two, and of course our board of commissioners. Okay, right, keep going, exactly. Lisa. Thank you. And, and when I, when you, you're well. uh, thank, you're well. when the next person and and so on, when I state your name, if you can go ahead and give me your address, um, and then maybe try to email me at a later date to um, follow up on some of these questions in case we miss any of them. Okay. Okay, yes. is there is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes. Barbara Daniel. Okay, Ms. Daniel. Yes, you can go Grant ahead. To the Board of Commissioners, the Mayor, the Tax Assessor, and our Appraisal Department, just want to tell you we appreciate what you do, but we need the right plan, the right budget, and the right time for this. I know where you're coming from. We've just spent too much money. So we need to look at, just like we do at home, what we need and what we want. <clears throat> so we've got to look at what the figures that you're looking at that you put up on the screen for us. We appreciate that. But we must stay in our budget. We're spending too much money. I know most of it goes to the Board of Education, but they too have been out of the building and there needs to be some conservation on these empty buildings. We, the taxpayer, knows what the answer is. You have to spend less. You have to know what your income is. Government has to know what we gave them, and they need to operate within that budget. Taxpayers have lost their jobs in this county. Some of them have had reduced hours. Some of them had had to sell things that they had as assets to be able to survive. Some have had higher utility bills. Some of them have had to cut off their air conditioning and use fans. They have had to keep their receipts and review every day and every week to make sure they were spending on the essentials. The essential workers truly have been out here, but some of them had to come to work and some of them stayed home by choice or whatever. But some of these people do not have jobs to give you extra money. Some of our households have even had to do spreadsheets just like you did over here on the computer. So there are essentials and there's wants and there's needs. There's, there's certainly been things that we have spent money on that could have waited. So what I want to do is no one wants to downsize and cut staff. No one wants to sell their assets or cut off their air conditioning. But hopefully you have an emergency fund somewhere called the general fund or something else. But we need to cut the spending. When you're spending someone else's money, it is easy to spend money, even if you don't have it. So we've got to find some surefire ways to stay within our budget. We get it. You spent more than you had within the budget. We are not an endless well of right, finance money for you. So we need for you to stay within the budget. The taxpayers depressed. We don't need any tax sales. We don't need any suicides. We don't need any more depression in the area. The whole area is depressed from this pandemic. So budgeting is the thing we need to do. Telling your money what you I like it to do way. for you. I know it's hard to stay within a budget, but we must do so. It's your fiduciary job to do this. So please don't give us this increase and drive troubled citizens to the brink of desperation. Their kids are at home. They're going crazy enough. It's a 24-7 
situation. So let's look at what we've got. You might get even sell something off yourself. If you had a credit card or a mortgage, you'd ask for payment arrangements. We've got to come up with a better solution besides going back to senior citizens and homeowners and businesses that have left this community because it's not uh, business friendly anymore. So don't run our folks off by having such taxes or spending so much and ask the taxpayers to give more when they have less. You know, they're just about budget expended themselves. So join a community of budgeting people. Thank you for your time and thank you for your service. Thank you, Ms. Daniel. And if I could remind everyone to please mute your phones or your computers um, so we don't have any interference while someone is speaking. Okay. Okay. Is there, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Someone yes, my, yes, my name is Eddie Parker. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, my name is Eddie Parker. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, Eddie Parker. Yes. Okay, you can go ahead. Yes, I would like to first of all start off by thanking the uh, board and commissioners for uh, everything that you do. I uh, do have a better understanding of. Uh, of, of the increase now, but uh, with that being said, as a uh, business owner and a property owner in Douglas County, I do want to state that I oppose the uh, the increase as it is being presented now. I do understand that there may be some needs for some things in in the uh, in the budget, but I uh, want to just stress that I oppose it because as a business owner and a property owner, uh, I feel like. That's a, a, a double hit for myself, and I'm sure that there are other people in the position that I am in as well. Uh, and with that being said, also, I would like to uh, see a breakdown of what that 33% or the new proposal percentage is for. How much, is, how much of that is for the uh, Board of Education and what those other figures uh, would come out to be. I do uh, appreciate the uh, breakdown. Uh, earlier, but I, I just need a little bit more detail of actually what the 33% uh, would be for. And that's my uh, thank you. Thank you for your service. Okay, thank you, Mr. Parker. Um, is there anyone else on the line who would like to speak? Yes, ma'am. My name is Stacy Hagler. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I do appreciate the well thought out and intelligent comments that other citizens have made. I can understand last minute changes and calculations versus what the original increase was posted as at about 30, 33%. And I do appreciate the work that has gone into the reduction of those numbers and reworking them uh, that y'all did on your retreat. Um, I'm a little disappointed in the lack of the detailed information posted on the Douglas County website about this. Um, the lack of information about the Microsoft Teams link so that we could actually see the presentations going on. I would like to know if the spreadsheets that were shown today and other information will be posted on the Douglas County website this morning before the 6 o'clock meeting tonight so that they're accessible to all citizens. I think it should be publicly posted, the detailed information, um, as opposed to just, you know, perhaps making sure we're getting back to citizens and, of course, answering their questions, uh, but just to make sure the transparency is on the website. Uh, everything is uh, such Internet-based these days, it seems um, a little difficult to have to send emails to government agencies to request documents. Um, I think they should be posted where everyone could see it. I would also like to see, as others, detailed information as to what any of this increase is going to, such as the school board, you know, other projects in the area, et cetera. Not the school board. Well, the property taxes, the school, the school gets some from that, right? Yes, ma'am, they do, but we, they do not be. Funds, yeah. But we won't. Yeah, the schools. Yeah. And, and, insta and instead of us. citizens footing the increase, like others have said, uh, especially during this pandemic situation, 
Um, you know, I think the incentives that have been given to corporations around the county, you know, to bring business in, which we can all understand, I think should probably have been structured a little differently. Um, one example that I just think of every day when I drive down Bright Star and uh, Douglas Boulevard is all the warehouses on Bright Star that have brought in this influx of tractor trailer trucks. Uh, that, that many more trucks in an area where the roads around here really can't handle it already, you know, will just continue to tear up roads even if we're trying to fix them. So I just see that as more tax dollars that have to be spent out of our pockets. Um, and also if this deficit situation, uh, as Kelly was explaining, uh, over the last five years or so, if it has occurred, you know, for that long, I don't think it should all be rectified in one year if that is what's happening and for it to be presented to the citizens in August. Uh, it was my understanding that it would be for this upcoming November tax bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hagler. Uh, is there anyone else on the line that would like to speak? Yes, I would like to. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kim Cephas. I live in the Holly Springs subdivision in Douglas County. I sent out an email yesterday um, suggested by my commissioner in my district, um, Commissioner Coffin, to all of the elected officials. Um, I'm, number one, opposing the property tax increase. Um, everyone has a story. I have two daughters in college and other financial responsibilities and obligations, just like my neighbors. I'm paying a lot for my property tax that's built into my budget, just like you all are showing us the budget. Thank you for your work. Uh, but that is unacceptable. There has to be a better way as opposed to having the property owners put the bill for this increase, whether it's COVID or mismanagement. There are other ways, and you have to look for those other ways such as what are the other counties around us doing to offset this unexpected expense? That's something that definitely needs to be looked into. With my company, I'm fortunate enough to work from home, but we're all taking a hit. As uh, examples, I take one furlough day every two weeks, okay, to help my company. So that's something that commissioners, elected officials, need to look into. It could be a temporary thing. It does not have to be long term, but we all have to share in the responsibility of what's going on. For those who don't live in this county, what is your county doing for your property? Are they increasing your property taxes as well? This should be something that has to be discussed. It shouldn't be, okay, we're going to increase this property tax to clear out this debt or to solve this problem. That's putting a Band-Aid on it. If it's still mismanagement, if COVID's going to be around for a while. So we need to look at the big picture. Increasing the sales tax, I would vote for that in a heartbeat because that spread that, that downfall there. So anybody purchasing anything in Douglas County is submitting to say, okay, I know it's going to be a 1%, 2%, whatever it is. We also need transparency. If you're going to increase my property tax, I need itemized everything nothing needs to be last minute meetings we need to know you know i know we're all going through this together but this debt needs to be worked on together and property owners everybody here does not own property so what about those who are renting everybody is affected but increasing my property tax is not the way to go i have enough debt enough stress and i don't need you to add more to it Thank you for your time. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Ms. Stephus. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Hello, yes, I would like to speak. Okay, can you state your name and address, please? Yes, my name is Theresa Virgil. I live in Ashworth Place in Douglasville. And I just want to thank you all for this opportunity to speak, uh, like so many others. Of, uh, I just wanted to echo that uh, I appreciate the work you all have done 
and I appreciate the efforts you've taken to improve our community. However, I do oppose this property tax increase. These are obviously abnormal times, obviously, uh, due to the pandemic. And so many have lost jobs. So many are struggling with medical issues. So many uh, are trying to make ends meet. This is not the time. And increasing the sales tax, I don't know. Maybe that actually would be a better method, a preferred solution. But increasing the property tax is not the best solution, not right now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Virgil. Um, anyone else on the line who would like to speak? My name is Ken, and I live in uh, Lithia Springs. Okay. What is your last name? Cody, C-O-T-E. Go ahead. Okay. You know, I know taxes are, are needed to uh, run and fund the community. And I know the federal emphasis on cutting taxes is forcing local um, taxes to be um, increased every year. Uh, the the non-support from the federal government and the state increases our local taxes. I understand that. That being said, um, proposing a 30% increase can be called a bit callous in regards to those that may be um, struggling right now financially. Um, I did see the new numbers where it's going to be lowered, and that probably should have been put out there before everything else was, you know, should have been really looked at. I'm not one for cutting um, wages and or um, established holiday pay, but I'm sure there's other areas that can be can be trimmed. Um, I think I noticed something about, uh, it looks like there's a $9 million uh, maybe set a, a fund set aside for a rainy day, you know, for a balance. But that may be trimmed and or, you know, increased at a slower rate, maybe, you know, over two years, three years. Um, what I would like to see, though, is a better stewardship of the tax revenue that is generated from uh, Douglas County citizens. Um, establishing a 3% increase in tax for this year's budget um, seems to be a little bit ambitious <clears throat> given the tax revenue history um, that was uh, seen over the previous years. Um, <clears throat> expenditures that were uh, made, such as the Bleakley building, along with the animal shelter, I'm amazed at how much money were spent on those two items alone. Um, don't know how that happened. I mean, the total amount of money spent in the Bleakley building, you could have built a Taj Mahal separately. I don't understand how that ever got proposed and who proposed it. Um, to point out with the tax increase, you know, I'm not a big uh, fan of local sales tax increases because I think you rely on, well, that's pretty much where we are now, how we got into this um, uh, boondoggle that we're in right now because we did rely on our sales tax. Um, what I am surprised is Douglas County is one of the closest counties to Atlanta. Why is our business and industry base not larger than it is? I look at I look at communities like Cobb County, and it's they obviously their their taxes property taxes are probably higher, but the amount of infrastructure that they offer their citizens parks and recs and you name it is leaps and bounds ahead of Douglas. We really need to go after our location to Atlanta and promote that to our businesses that are in the area. Um, increasing more warehouses is not going to do it. I mean, Lithia Springs may be the warehouse capital of Georgia, but mm -hmm. that's not really helping us much. Um, I do all my shopping in Cobb County. All the businesses I frequent, there's not one of them in Douglas County. I don't understand that. You know, you may not be able to get a Costco, but you should be able to get um, Sprouts or uh, Fresh Market or Trader Joe's or a number of other of these small little uh, companies that would, I think, increase my ability to, or wanting to spend money in Douglas County. There's nothing downtown 
in Douglasville that attracts me. The, the, the town center itself, there is no real town center. There's no sense of community. Why aren't we building that here in Douglas County? I don't feel part of Douglas County. Um, and that's and that's sad. So I would like to see us work together, whether it's establishing some type of citizen committee to make recommendations and suggestions and to get more input from the citizens here and really make Douglas County shine. I mean, we should be uh, one of the best counties in this area due to its location. We're just Mr. not taking advantage of it. Thank you. Mr. That's Cody. All. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else on the line who would like to speak? Okay. All right. Close it. Okay, Chairman. I believe that's it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We've heard uh, from our citizens today for the public hearing. This public hearing is now closed. Thank you so much to citizens of Douglas County. We appreciate you, the Board of Commissioners, and I appreciate you coming in today, expressing your concerns. And I certainly appreciate you allowing us to provide a demonstration on what we've done from the initial proposal of the 92.9% uh, that was advertised in our newspaper. And certainly we can't control those things that are advertised in advance. But this uh, administration, of course, when I say that, the cabinet was given an assignment from a board of commissioners to go back and tighten the number down and do what we could to find every avenue of uh, in a way of cutting expenses and we've done that. But I want to remind the citizens that tax sales are down all over the nation for local governments, and Douglas County is not exempt. And I know sales tax was an, uh, uh, an idea that was thrown out there, but they're down all over because of the pandemic. And we are doing all we can, I want to make it very clear, to tighten down every aspect of this budget to make sure there's no flow. So with that being said, Board of Commissioners, do you have any comments? And if not, we will close the meeting out. Any comments? We certainly were here to listen to our citizens today. And citizens, what I'm going to do, we had a couple of questions I wanted to do. I wanted to get back with you all. Uh, and I'm going to, what we're going to do, we'll post all that information on the website. We will post the slides. I believe one citizen asked if we could post the information on the website. We will make sure that information is posted today because that's the, our latest uh, update. And also, Mark, if you could, could you share with the citizens what the the percentage increase would be uh, now versus 32.9? Is it 18.45? Is that where we are? Yes, I just here. have an approximate. Sabrina, can you tell me exactly what that number is? Yes, that's correct. It's 18.45. Okay, 18.45. And uh, Sabrina, what does that mean for a parcel or a property valued at uh, real uh, market value uh, of 100,000? What what would that be? Is that $4 additional per month? Tell um, the citizens, they need to know. Pull it up. Hold on, pull up the sheet and I can show you. Yeah, that. the citizens need to see that and then we're gonna close out. And, and this is a part of the list. slide um, as well. So citizens can kind of review it, but for a hundred thousand dollar home, can everybody see my screen yet? No. Yes. Yeah, oh, there, there we go. You can see it. It's okay. Um, and this is the way we do this is in comparison to last year's millage rate, which is the ten point two one three. Department of Revenue requires us to advertise it by the rollback rate. But again, what the citizens were used to were the ten point two one three. And kind of just to answer that the previous man's question. How you kind of calculate this is whatever the fair market value from the assessment you received, you take 40% of that. And then if you have the homestead exemption, you subtract out 6,000, that gives you your taxable value. If you ever want to calculate what your specific taxes would be without, because I know a lot of this can depend upon it, what you're at, but if you take whatever your taxable value is and divide it by a thousand, so for example, a hundred thousand dollar home, that'd be 34. If you took 34 and then you multiplied it by the advertised millage rate, which right now we're at 11.638, that would get you your total tax bill for just the portion of the county. This is just showing the difference um, of what would have been from last year if you had no change in your assessment. So, for some 
But a, their total tax bill for just the county portion for 100000 would be 396 so I hope that makes a little more sense to the citizens and clarifies it a little on how the millage rate works. Can that be questions? posted on the website? Madam Chair? Okay. So we will, yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Mm -hmm. No, when, when you finish making your statement, I just want to let you know my hand is waiting when you get ready now. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I didn't see it. Okay, um, Sabrina, I believe yesterday, when we chatted, you said that a uh, hundred thousand dollar parcel or home value would be four dollars, and then of course you, I, I wrote everything down. I believe you said uh, it would be nine dollars for two hundred, a house valued at two hundred. That's per month now, not per year. I believe it's one hundred fifty-three dollars uh, one um, time. Shot an arm of fifty. It'd be five dollar to... monthly for a hundred thousand, and eleven dollar for two hundred thousand. But again, that's just in comparison to last year's rate. The additional amount. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, then, now, and that slide proposal. is a part of um, what Mark's PowerPoint was. That last slide has that breakdown. So if you all put that on the website, all the citizens will be able to see it and kind of see where they align. But I just wanted to kind of let them know how we get that calculation. If they wanted to look at their specific tax assessment, they could know for sure where they'd stand. Is okay. is because our our, our initial approach. Uh, Proposal of that 32.96 percent. It it was it had a nine dollars and ninety six cent uh, impact per month on the on the citizens, but now that number has been crushed down to five dollars. And then the uh, if it was two hundred thousand dollars at that initial 32.9, it was nineteen dollars uh, and ninety eight cent, and that number has been crushed down to eleven dollars. So we're still crushing and massaging. So. Okay. Well, with that being said, Vice Chairman Robinson, you you have the floor, and then we, if if no, if there's no other discussion from the Board of Commissioners, I'll close out. Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice so Chairman. Much. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is j just to double back in closing, you know, to the citizens, and I really appreciate the feedback, and um, the, the um, you know, the founders got this right by having public hearings and public meetings and. And open records and, and, and duly noted. Um, um, I don't think that the, to the administration's point, um, you having to respond in a moment like this is, is commendable. And, and while I do appreciate citizens wanting, if it was a more planned moment to lay out this information, um, this was hard work. It may look easy, but that was a lot of work to be able to turn this around like they did. So I, I want to acknowledge that um, because you, you, you've got, again, I want to just go back. This What this is about is um, I won't say it's a flawed fiscal policy, but it's aged out, and this is important. Uh, I appreciate, um, like we said, we, we move beyond a rural county. This is suburban county. This is what going on 150,000 strong. Now we're not Cobb at 800,000 or a one billion dollar budget. We're only 199 square miles. We're, we're sort of, you know, a, a moderate sized county. So let, let's keep things in context. But we're no longer a small county, and, and and everything has aged out, right? I mean, your infrastructure has aged out. Our institutional knowledge of workers is aging out. Our policy has aged out. It is time to reform. It's time to shift. And I, I again, I, I just want to make sure the citizens understand this was not uh, for lack of understanding. It's just the structure over time. If you think about it, when we had that that millage rate at twelve five during the Great Recession, it should have been left alone. You don't politicize the Federal Reserve at the local level. So you, you change the interest rate and you began to spend up, but then you began to roll back the taxes. Like, what are you doing? So those five straight years, undermine it yourself. This is the year that you should have been getting relief, but we gave you five straight years of relief during good times. Flawed. We hurt ourselves, right? Not understanding how it all fits together. So here we are. I mean, we spent what six million dollars on add this up, five million dollars on the animal shelter, six million dollars on that courthouse, four million dollars on that tax commissioner building. Okay, that's fourteen by itself. We roll back nine million dollars as it relates to uh, uh, the rollback. Okay, we're up to twenty-four million. Fast. Like, so to Madam Chair, like, okay, come on, guys, think about the hand she dealt. Then we knocked over 
because of the pandemic. Oh boy. And then we had a little bit of aggressive budget. So it, there's the historical, there's the pandemic, and then obviously our, our budget in light of, we, we were thinking we were still in 10 straight years of a, of, a, of a bull market. So Madam Chair, to your point, I appreciate the effort that I've seen here. Uh, you guys have done a good job as far as this. It is something to Madam Guy's point, we need to process all of this. I mean, um, at least you gave us something to chew on between now and six o'clock. But again, we have until next week to make a decision. So to the citizens, uh, at least from my perspective, I'm not weighing in one way or another. I've got to take all this in. But I want to just just so that people understand how we got here. But we do have to fix it. But to that point, how do we fix it? And, and, and is this the time? And do we think that the outlook is is bright? And, and I, I do want to acknowledge that, Madam Chair, to your credit, we've got $4.9 billion in economic development in the pipeline. Our outlook is bright. Our job is just to bridge us for the next 18 months, guys. How do we get through this pandemic? How do we how do we hold? We got right now to deal with this thing. So to the citizens, yes, we're all in it together. Yes, I, it looks like the administration is trying to make the necessary cuts. Is it enough? You either raise the rate or you cut. Now you do something in between. Those are your two options. Raise the rate to make up the deficit, cut to make the deficit. And if you don't want to do either one, then there's something in the middle. And hopefully by uh, this time next week, we will have settled on something that is amenable to the entire public. Madam Chair, I just want to give you that context as Chairman of the Finance Committee. I hope that was helpful, and I yield the floor, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, thank you so I much. I have a question. Yeah. That's it. We, we are no longer taking questions from the citizens. I, at least if you could get our citizens' telephone number, I'd be more than happy to call her. Uh, the public hearing is closed, uh, and we're going to... I'm, I'm going to make sure the Board of Commissioners, do you have any other comment? Uh, citizen, if you could give me your information, I'm going to give you a call as soon as this meeting is over with. Who is I that? I just want to know, are we going to have a follow-up meeting? Uh, we're going to have a meeting, yes, ma'am. We're going to have a meeting today, another public hearing, and then our the Board of Commissioners will be voting on Thursday, uh, August the 26th. And I'll give you my telephone number, and then you can have one. I'll have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, and I'll be happy to answer all your questions. So if you could give me your, well, if you could give it to my clerk. Lisa, can you get the information? Uh, what is your name, ma'am? I don't have a question. That was the only question that I had where we're having a follow-up meeting. And oh, yes, ma'am. We're going to have a meeting. We're going to have a meeting today at 6 o'clock. It'll be another public hearing. So if you want to join Chair, us at that time, you can. Yes. Madam Chair, actually, yes, the Mark. meeting next week is uh, it's Wednesday the 26th at 10 o'clock. I'm sorry. It's Wednesday. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's Wednesday instead of Thursday the 26th. But we have another meeting today at 6 o'clock, and we look forward to you attending. Okay. Absolutely. Thank another you. Another public hearing. Okay, you're welcome. All right, if there's okay. nothing else to come before. Okay, uh, I hear. Commissioner Mitchell. Yeah, Commissioner Mitchell, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, just, I mean, I, we've got to, as, as the, uh, my colleague stated, that we all got to kind of, you know, dissect, um, chew on this, this, these numbers and make sure we all understand kind of what it is and where we're going. But I do have just one quick question. Or maybe Mark and our finance team. Um, the one question I've got. Um, well, first of all, Mark, will you make this? I know this is only a temporary layout, but will we be able to make this accessible, whether it's on the website or wherever else? So for those citizens who are able to just pull it up and just download it or whatever the case may be, that they're able to kind of grab this. Because I, I kind of heard that as one of the concerns of a few of the uh, citizens speaking earlier. They just want to have the numbers in front of them so they can look at it and see why, what, when, where, and how, even though this is not confirmed. So is that doable, Mark? Yes, sir. Yeah. Already planning to do that as soon as the meeting's over. Great. Okay. So for those citizens who are listening, then the numbers will be on the website. At least this, this um, layout is on the website so that he or she can kind of grab and go and look at the numbers as the commissioners will be doing as well. Okay, the other thing, um, there was a couple of numbers that I was kind of just making sure I saw them correctly and I'm looking for my notes to so bear with me one second. Oh, the CARES Act. So if I'm hearing correctly, because once I go back and look at these numbers, uh, the CARES Act frontline 
money that we spent to the frontline workers uh, or employees. Are you telling me now that ACCG telling you now that you can go back and try to uh, capture that expense when we were told that because we didn't have a policy in place that we could not capture that, but we put the policy in place and moving forward that we can. So please help me to understand that first, Mark. Yes. So actually, um, so to begin with, we were discussing FEMA and GEMA reimbursements. So okay. hazard pay was not allowed if you didn't already have a policy in place. With the Georgia CARES Act, hazard pay is specifically mentioned as a reimbursable expense. So is it before the policy, after the policy, or does the policy have anything to deal with at this point in time? I'm sorry. Policy doesn't have anything to do with it as far as the CARES Act is concerned. Got it. So, so the possibility of getting back those funds uh, are now in our favor. Not guaranteed, but in our favor. Yes, sir. And actually, in addition to ACCG, they just updated the web, the uh, Georgia CARES Act portal, portal at the state, mm -hmm. and it specifically says that payroll expenses for front frontline employees can be used. And I'll be sending that out shortly after the meeting. So those roughly about a, I'm going to say eight to hundred to a million dollars are funds that are we make be able to recoup those funds now. That's actually more than that. It's 5.5 .5 million. Okay. okay. Plus some, um, if there's a phase two CARES Act. Right, right. And, 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 and we're, we're basically saying this is, this is a fact now. This is not, we may or may not. We will be able to get these funds if the funds become available through the CARES Act. Yes, sir, I believe so. Now, I've only read the document once, so I've got to look at it after this meeting's over, but I'm... 99.9% .9 positive. Yeah, because I guess I was under the impression that those funds were water on the bridge, which, you know, um, it, 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 it's, it's water on the bridge for me, but I didn't realize that those funds, we could capitalize on those funds. But if, if within the CARES Act, if that's going to be a fund that we can look at, I'm willing to take that look because I'm like the citizen spoke earlier. Let's look at other means, other ways. What else can we do? Did we Have we cut, trim enough fat from wherever else to make sure that a military increase is, is what I call the very last, not the, the first. Also, you, you, you guys mentioned about the BRIs and, and uh, hiring freeze and a few other things. Um, can I see that? Well, I'll get that slide later. I was going to say, can I see that slide once again? I know we went over a couple of numbers there, but I need to kind of get it in front of me to verify some of these numbers because those are some, some healthy numbers. And I just want to make sure. Oh, and last but not least, uh, the five days for all employees across the board, correct? Am I correct in what I'm saying on that, Mark, or is this? Yes, that's every employee across the board, five furlough days, not including elected officials. Right, 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 not including elected officials, right, understood. Okay, so everybody will get touched on that. And I know we, we having other discussions about the 3% on the uh, increase that we're gonna talk about again this evening, I think, in reference to the um, defined benefits, correct? Well, it was our understanding that that was pushed off to the next meeting to the yesterday. Next meeting. Okay, okay, all right, okay. So we're gonna have some discussion about that because I think Vice Chair Robinson mentioned that. Okay, that, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, and those won't it won't affect the 2020 budget, but it will help the defined benefit pension in 2021. Oh, I got it. I, I mean, but I think the conversation began that it was gonna be a part of the 2020, <laughs> and it would move into the 2021. However, um, it, it all of a sudden became delusional that it didn't. The conversation wasn't as such, but but that's okay. We'll we'll we'll, we'll kind of we'll move on with that. So again, back to the furlough day. So across the board, the entire staff is looking at a possible five day furlough and that's what's in the numbers that we're dealing with now, correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. And um, Mark and uh, Commissioner Mitchell, I just wanna make sure we clarify too that it's five days for eight hour employees, but since, you know, like the fire department, a lot of them work 24 hour shifts. So that would equivalent to 120 hours. So that would be, a, I mean, that'd be weeks and weeks for them. So we're breaking theirs down to kind of make an hour equivalent. So the 24-hour employees is just two days, and the 12-hour employees is three days. 
And then the eight hour employees, it is five days where it's all kind of the fairest way we can do it. Understood. That makes sense. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I understand. I, I get. I just that. want to make sure that was clarified. <laughs> no, Thank and, you. And, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that. That's 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 good though. And then I think I heard the Christmas bonuses and uh, training bonuses and hiring freeze and all those BRIs and all that good stuff. And again, I once I get the numbers in front of me, I, I can better better, you know, kind of go over these numbers and make sure that that's where we are because I just want to make sure, uh, Mark. And I know you guys are doing a great job at trying to get us there. Is this going to be enough? Not that I, I, I'm looking for looking forward to any type of an increase or any furloughs, but will this be enough for what we're trying to accomplish? Because if not, I don't want it to see us go back and try to figure out, or we, oh, you know, we're kicking the can down the road just trying to get through it. So I'm just looking forward to making sure that this is enough, and I will know that once I kind of look at the numbers. Uh, I know they came out pretty late last night or this morning and, and we'll kind of take our time and, and dissect them and then i think the commission will kind of make a decision but i'm looking forward to the meeting this evening and then we'll move forward so i'll yield at this point but that's all i've got for right now though so but thank you again i yield back madam chair okay thank you so much commissioner mitchell i see you're uh, commissioner guider then after that we're going to wrap up commissioner guider yeah, this this is just real quick uh mark you said that the furloughs uh, apply to uh, all employees except the elected officials. Are you talking about the elected officials? Employees or the elected officials themselves? The elected officials themselves. It applies okay, to so, all employees. So, so all, all the employees. County employees. Okay. All right. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. All right. If there's nothing else to come before this board, Chairman certainly. Jones. Okay. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Commissioner Carthen. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. One quick question for Director Teal. There was a slide that you showed us in regards to the uh, county policy required fund balance minimum, the unassigned. And the slide showed uh, 10 million and you reduced it to 9.2 million. And I think you said you did that based on what next year's projected budget would be. But no, we I base that I base that on, um, and actually part of the comments came from from you was that next year our goal was to have a ninety two million dollar budget. Correct. That was our goal because I wanted to ensure that we are actually doing a budget based on what our revenues uh, would be. So if we're talking about a nine point two. Uh, fund balance for next year, I thought we were trying to make up for the fund balance we used for 2020 this year. So how are we already talking about 2021? No, that 9.2 is 10% of 92. Okay, but that's for next year. I thought this, I thought this, what we're doing now is for 2020. I thought we're trying to make yeah, up. it is. Okay, so why are, why are you putting in 9.2? Because when we go in through the budget process for 2021, the current fund balance theoretically would be 9.2 million. But how much have we taken out the fund balance for this year for 2020? So that's that. I think that's where the confusion is for for even for Commissioner Mitchell on questioning you about the the pension. We are we doing 2020? or are we doing 2021? So the millage rate is for the 2020 budget that has already mm -hmm. been adopted. Correct. So if we're sticking to what it is for 2020, then our fund balance shouldn't go to 2021. The fund balance should be the money that we need to collect to meet the 2020 budget. Does that no, make sense so, to you? So the nine point the nine point two million is the unassigned fund balance. Right. So that's like set over to the side, sort of like a like a uh, you know, it's just set aside. It's not assigned to anyone's budget. Exactly. So it's totally I get separate. That. How much did we take out of fund balance for this year? Um, I don't have those. Sabrina, do you have those numbers? It was around five million. 
Okay. And how much have we set aside that needs to go back into the fund balance for this year, for 2020? I'm not talking about 2021 because we ain't got there yet. We just need to make sure that we're balanced in 2020 so that we can go into 2021, not in a deficit. Yeah. And so, that was Sabrina, correct me if I'm wrong. So based on the calculations with the numbers that were provided, if you go with column two, which would be the one to the right, right, then that would put us at 9.2 million fund balance. And I think what you're asking, Commissioner Carthen, if I can pull it back up, it actually be, hold on, I'll pull it up. It might make more sense if I'm, if I'm understanding. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Because I'm trying to figure out how we how we go from 10.5 to 9.2, basing 9.2 on 2021. We haven't got there yet. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, I can. I see think it. what you're asking is the number right here. This 5.8. That's how much cash is going to be required to get to the fund balance policy. Mm -hmm. But what Mark's saying is the fund balance policy, if we're going to go off of the 2021 expenditures, assuming we can get a $92 million budget, dropping it there, and that put us to 5.6. I, I, I totally understood what, what he did. I just, I'm not in agreement with it. When you, when you're, when column H shows you 10.5 is what you need it for 2020. Right. So put it, put it back for 2020 and then go forward to your 2021 and then base it off of what your revenues or what your projected budget would be for 2021. But, uh, but we'll, we'll, can, we'll move forward. I, I have other questions regarding that. Can I we'll add to it for you? Okay. Commissioner. Yes. Commissioner. I just wanted yeah. to see if I could add the reason. Let me let me see. I, I'm gonna see if I could take a stab at it. The reason why it's 9.2 million is because I, I had the question before. We had it at 10, but we're mm -hmm. gonna adopt the budget down to. Is my understanding we're gonna amend the budget down this 2020 budget down to 92 million? I believe we're gonna do that today, and that's the reason why it's it's. Uh, that's why that you see that 9.2 uh, uh, million there. No, is that it, am I correct? Now. Okay, no, so that's, that's not correct. That's not what we're doing, Sabrina. We're, okay. No, we are amending it down three million, but it's getting amended down to one hundred seven point almost nine million for expenses. That was the ninety two million was in reference to twenty twenty one. So, so what okay. will our, what are we amending our twenty twenty budget to? To one hundred seven point nine. That would mean our fund balance policy of 10% would be what, Sabrina? That would be just 10% of that. So I, I can pull uh -huh. that in for you. So that would be 10, 10, 10, 10 million. 10.7. Okay. So this is why I'm questioning this because I, I just want to make sure, again, I'm harping on the policy. We can't have a policy if we're not going to follow it. So we have to do the 10% of whatever we are going to amend this year's budget for. We'll deal with 2021. We haven't got there yet. We just want to make sure we're dealing with 2020. And we want to make sure we're dealing with real numbers so that we won't do deficit spending again. That's all. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm uh, I'm understanding it, you're correct, correctly uh, presenting it, and that we're all on the same page. That's all. Thank you so much. I yield the right, floor, Chair Jones. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. All right. If there's nothing else to come before this board of commissioners, this meeting is adjourned. And well, no. it's not even adjourned. Let's just say that we are <laughs> in recess until six uh, o'clock today. And we'll pick up with our board of commissioners meeting and we have another public hearing scheduled. So with that being said, um, we will see you again at six o'clock, uh, board of commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. Thank you, Madam Chair.